Greetings. Hello, and how are you all doing? Um, <clears throat> today, I uh, wanted to sort of speak about something I did today, which at the time of uh, recording is uh, December 7th. Um, so, uh, you probably see this days later, no doubt, but, uh, yeah, today I, uh, saw a film in the, in the theater, on the big screen, obviously, um, that I had already talked about earlier this year, um, you may recall months ago, if you subscribed that, uh, that long, that, uh, I talked about, well, in descending order, uh, the best friends, the Disaster Artist, and The Room, because this film is 20 years old. And so I went today to see The Room in the theater. Um, I had never done that before, and earlier this year there was a opportunity to go like a, for like a Fathom event thing, but, you know, that was like, there, there was a bunch of stuff going on, and so I wasn't able to do so. But at Fleur Cinema, uh, a very a nearby theater, they had a screening of The Room, and they had Greg Sestero uh, arrive, who was the co-star of The Room. And, uh, yeah, I got to see him and meet him a bit. He signed... My book, of his or his my copy of his book. Oh hi, Jared. So that's cool. I didn't get to have, get a picture with him because, well, uh, by the time well when I got there, um, I I actually was the first person to actually get a signature from him. So that's pretty cool. So I got there earlier enough, but there's enough people there also, and they were starting to get a a line was sort of starting to form and people were getting things signed and he had uh, copies of his book not necessarily like this but uh, the, the one with the red and the film reel with the that's basically like a bomb the fuse um, and there were uh, copies of The Room available to buy, as well as uh, Miracle Valley, his uh, directorial debut film, which I did not get because, well, I didn't have any more money at that point, but, you know, uh, I was able to get a autograph from him and meet him, and he was, uh, I also got to speak to him a bit, and, uh, you know, in all the interviews and some of these other Q&As, which there was one after the film ended, but, you know, he always seemed like a very nice guy, you know, a really good guy. And saying how, you know, I basically just mentioned how I really loved the book, and how I enjoyed the movie, but, um, you know, when reading the book and also listening to the audiobook, um, you know, you kind of wish that uh, some of the things that were in the book were kind of, were actually in the movie. But then, as he said, you know, but they kind of wanted it to more upbeat, because... The book at times that are aren't so many happy moments, which you know does make sense when you're talking about the life of somebody like Greg and or Tommy, um, <clears throat> trying to you know make it in the film world, and um, you know uh, Greg, you know even at the Q and A, he's like he talked about this about how he got to have. Uh, <clears throat> some, uh, yeah, he, he had done some acting prior to the room and how, uh, uh like, uh, retro puppet master, like, was the big thing that he did at that point in time. And he, uh, did the room because, you know, Tommy's his friend and he, you know, asked, asked him to help and, you know, and and so he did, and, you know, he didn't think it would be really 
would do much. You know, it would like he'd make it with Tommy, and then there you go. Uh, there might have been, uh, you know, uh, screening because Tommy wanted it to be shown in a theater in like a Los Angeles. So there you go. There'd be some like a premiere, and uh, there is that. You know, there'd be all that, and then that would be it. And he would do other things. Um, and so, you know, uh, hearing this live uh, at a Q&A um, after the film was really cool. And, uh, and, if, and there, were some, there were somebody who, before the movie began, you know, giving spoons, and I took some of these uh, before I left. But, you know, and of course, if you know anything about the room and screenings, when you see a spoon, people yell spoon. And as soon as you see like a picture of a spoon, because, you know, in the. Um, I'm pretty sure I said this earlier in my uh, months ago in my uh, room video, but when people see spoons in picture frames, because what had happened was they bought a bunch of picture frames, you know, throughout the various rooms and stuff. So that way, uh, they could get pictures of, uh, everybody like, you know, with, the the characters are like, you know, Tommy and Lisa, uh, Mark and Denny and, uh, Claudette and all, like all their friends and family. Uh, but they didn't do that. They, like, either ran out of time before shooting began to actually do some photo shoots. Or it could have been, like, well, we need to fill the background. So get by some of these, put that there, and, just, again, just didn't fill it with pictures. Uh, they, they, while that was there were uh, uh, the pictures of Spoods that happened to... Uh, uh, accompany the uh, uh, or that were in the uh, picture frames and so you see those you, you, you then throw a spoon or multiple spoons and throughout the whole thing there were people were quoting the movie um, obviously and um, Greg he said I'm, I'm going to do something I don't really do which is he's gonna watch the movie and then he's he, so as he was he came in at various parts of the movie at the very beginning, and then show up in the middle, then at the, but near the end with the party. Uh, uh, and he would just sort of commentate over it, like you know he's just like, uh, and uh, it it was just a fun. It was a fun time. It was a really uh, cool. Um, thing and uh, why well, I wasn't sure if I would ever get to see it in the big screen um, the opportunity arose <laughs> at the end of this year and uh, I'm like I'm, I'm going to do it I, I, if this was the only time I got to see it I loved it um, if he ever comes back to Des Moines I will definitely uh, uh, come back and uh, and hopefully get a picture with him next time. You know, it, it, again, like the, the more people sort of gathering around after, uh, you know, after I got uh, my book signed and then others started to come up, it only dawned on me later to, you know, I probably should have uh, at least asked uh, for a picture. And then I saw on Instagram for like stories and stuff like for the, um, at the theater, like the Thriller Cinema, that there were people who, um, got pictures taken uh with him so you know it's just one of those things and then af at after the movie and the q a you know it was just filled with you know people you know and i i went to the bathroom afterwards because you know well you know i needed to go and then after that it's like you know there's so many people there it's like you know i you know I, i'm not gonna be able to you know necessarily uh, buy another, uh, buy something like, you know, a poster or a 
movie and uh, um, and he signed my book, which I'm happy for about that. So it's awesome. It'll be kind of cool though, perhaps to if he brings all that stuff again. I probably buy uh, his uh, uh, the, his first film that he uh, made his, that he directed. Um, uh, uh, Nightmare Valley. Um, I know I said it correctly earlier, and I hope that was the correct uh, 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 title. Because uh, I'm a little tired right now, but you know, I thought you know uh, I should say something right now in order to uh, you know. But as soon as I got home, like I kind of waited a bit, you know, trying to try to form all of my thoughts together about the experiences. Aside from it being great, it's like you know I, I want to sort of make sure I know what to say and all that good stuff, so it's not just a complete rambling mess. Which this could very well be a big rambling mess. And if so, I apologize, but you know. Uh, It, it was awesome. It was great. I uh, got to meet Greg Sestero, and um, I've heard his film a little bit about his film, and now some say it's like a sort of like a homage to the horror films of the seventies and eighties. And you know, if that's the case, that probably would be cool uh, to watch and. Um, I like to see it just to see what it's like. Um, <clears throat> I know he's in it, um, so there is that. And um, he also mentioned a bit about his uh, next film that he's uh, intending to make, a uh, Forbidden Sky, about a guy who has his own conspiracy talk show on the radio. There, he lives in the in a in the desert in a trailer. He used to have his own show, which was a very like a successful and got canceled but so he's now a uh a radio host of a like a, like, a, like a conspiracy uh theory show and uh about things like you know UFOs and then he gets contacted by aliens who are trying to come to earth and so you know that's what was given and uh we mentioned how there was a kickstarter and how uh they got the money for it, and so next year they're aiming to film it, so that would be really cool. Uh, be really awesome to see uh, him and, and his directorial style, so I definitely uh, want to get his first film, and then from there probably we'll get his second film. Um, so yeah, um... That's really it. Uh, it's really like the first time I ever met a famous person. I mean, I've been to concerts, but you know, you don't always get to meet the, you know, the band or rapper or whoever that uh, you went and saw uh, perform on stage. Um, but this was really cool, and uh, and again, I hope next time I'll be able to get. Um, a picture with him. And, uh, and yeah. But, you know, he, uh, he, uh, is a really cool guy. Uh, from, you know, from everything I've seen of him, of Greg Sestero, and uh, just the brief little interaction. He's a very nice guy. And um, I'm really glad that's how it is uh, in person as opposed to, you know, sometimes you hear how people meet certain uh, famous people and, you know, they kind of have a certain idea of who they, who they are, you know, either based off of the uh, stuff they've seen of the, 
them, they act. Um, well, excuse me. Um, but, you know, how they act and um, their various roles and perhaps other interviews. And so, but then when they beat them in person, regardless of uh, how long the interaction is, it can sometimes be uh, disappointing for some people. But for me, it was actually not very disappointing. It was not disappointing at all. It was uh, really cool. And also, I just didn't want to really potentially, uh, you know, hold up any lines and, you know. But next time, I hope to be able to, uh, you know, if it comes back here, because every so often the room uh, comes to to Iowa, to Des Moines specifically, and so that's really cool. So I hope to at least have another opportunity to see this on the big screen. Um, whether uh, uh, he will do commentary with the film or not. Um, and he may have done this before in other cities, and it could be he's doing this because, you know, uh, it's the 20th anniversary, so he might be doing the rounds uh, uh, as he's, like, touring with the film. Uh, and just uh, talking, <laughs> uh, commenting over the film as it plays before doing a Q&A after the film. Um, yeah, yeah, this is a... Uh, this was an amazing experience. Um, again, I know some people aren't too fond of films that are with the label of a so bad it's good. But I will say, um, if you have the opportunity to ever see it on the big screen with an audience, just go and do it. Um, if Greg Sestero is there, great. You know, if Tommy Wiseau is there, great. If both of them are there, that's great too um but regardless i think it would be really cool to see it at least once on the big screen because uh, that is an experience like no other and um you know uh, and if you haven't seen it before it might be good to get like the blu-ray or the dvd or what have you that way you can watch it at home so you can see um see the film and also hear the dialogue properly and all the music um, <clears throat> uh, belly button sex and all you know so just uh if you uh, uh want to uh, uh see it do that and then uh, see it on the big screen uh, if and when you're able to so I hope uh, I hope uh, yeah if you have seen this film on the big screen um, what did you think did you think it was a a, a great time <laughs> um, was it your first time and so while it might have been a fun experience you <laughs> might not have been able to really hear much of what was going on uh, amidst the laughters and um, uh, saying of lines when uh, certain um, moments came up. Um, and Greg also mentioned how, you know, as as the movie's going on and he's commenting, like, how we're all in the suit in the Chinese place. And like, how he's like, and when I was cheeping like a, like, like, like a chicken, um, if you look real closely, you could just before the scene cuts to the to everybody in their tuxedos throwing the football around that uh you know, I, I look at the camera and just before it cuts off and uh, and if, you know, it was just really funny. It just uh that was a fun experience. Greg Sisteria seems to be like a, a really great guy. Um from the interactions I had with him, you know, it might, it, despite the fact that it was, it wasn't a big one, but it was one, and it was also uh, great to uh, 
see this film with uh, audience. Um, it, it is definitely one of my uh, favorite th uh, experiences in a movie theater. So, uh, you know, I believe I've mentioned some of them, uh, those here and there, but this is definitely one of my favorites. I don't know. Um, top five, top three, I don't know. I, I, I've never done a ranking of that before, but this is definitely a top uh, contender. And it's a, it was great. It was just great to see. And um, yeah, um, if you have seen this at the theater again, let me know what you think about your or what, uh, let me know about what your experience was like and what you think of the film. <laughs> also, you could do that. Um, probably have already at some point somewhere yeah. uh, up there um, I like a little card for the video earlier and to go to the uh, the room uh, <laughs> uh, discussion of my, me talking about the film and um, yeah Tommy Wiseau is uh, an incredibly unique man. Greg Sestero is a great friend. Uh, the two of them talk pretty much every day. And, uh, you know, it's like, you know, it, it, you even point out, you know, in so many ways, there are many differences between us, and yet we have a certain connection. Uh, primarily a uh, bonding of love of movies and so they are uh, <clears throat> basically they're friends for life essentially and so that's uh, that's a great thing um, Tommy Wiseau is uh, one of the most uh, unique and remarkable people who has ever lived and Greg Sestero is also uh, uh, an amazing guy. Um, I didn't talk to him very long, but again, I thought, you know, people around and eventually, yes, a, a line did absolutely form. I know I said like there was a line forming. Well, I guess that was a little later, but still there were people who were around the area where he had all the stuff and you could come up and sign it. Uh, or he would sign something for you, like book or uh, what have you, that you'd come up to him with. Um, and yeah, I just, uh, I just think he was a, a, a really great guy. Um, just from the interaction I had. So uh, I don't think he'll ever see this video, but you never know. Um, if so. Great to see you, Greg, and I uh, hope you'll come back, and because uh, I would definitely uh, see it again, just to uh, uh, meet you again, and perhaps uh, um, get a picture with you at some point. But I hope, uh, yeah, I hope uh, you're doing well. I hope uh, you're all doing well, yeah, and that everything, uh, your day is great. Your weekend was great uh i hope your week will be great too so yeah <clears throat> uh thank you all for watching and i hope all of you will just take care and uh hope you've had a great day so uh uh yeah have a great uh great week just uh be safe and uh uh, enjoy yourself.